welcome to Classic Sitcoms, Facts, and Trivia. I appreciate you being here. Uh, before we get started, please subscribe if you have not, uh, and share these out uh, with your family and friends. Seems like we're having a good time here. Let's more the merrier. Uh, today's video is on some things you may not know about the monsters. Let's see what they are. Okay, we start with Mel Blanc was the voice of the Raven. Fans of the monsters will remember the cuckoo bird clock in the family's living room, but instead of a little bird popping out, it was a raven that would exclaim, Nevermore, a reference to the Edgar Allan Poe uh, poem, The Raven. The man behind The Raven was famed voice actor and radio personality Mel Blanc, the man of a thousand voices, who also voiced Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Daffy Duck, Barney Rubble, Mr. Spacely, and even Granny. Uh, the Lost Pilot of the Monsters. Most fans of the shows recognize the episode My Fair Monster as the one where Grandpa creates a love potion to help Marilyn with her boyfriend troubles. However, this is also the title of the unaired pilot that was rarely seen. The original pilot episode was filmed in color and featured different actors in the roles of Lily and Eddie. Character Lily was played by Phoebe in the pilot. However, CBS wasn't happy with that what they saw and changes were made to resemble the shows fans are familiar with today. Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis worked together before. Uh, before Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis were Herman and Grandpa, the two actors co-starred in the police comedy sitcom Car 54, Where Are You? The show ran for two seasons, from 61 to 63, and followed the adventures of two mismatched New York police officers. Uh, the connection between Grandpa and Frankenstein's labs. One of the most iconic sets in movie history is Dr. Frankenstein's lab in 1931's Frankenstein. The man behind the set design was Kenneth Strickfaden, the famous special effects specialist at the time who was credited for creating the sets for more than 100 movies. He was also the head of the special effects crew for the Monsters and is credited with designing Grandpa's lab. Uh, this is why the Monsters were shot in black and white. Even though TV shows were being filmed and played in color when the Monsters premiered in 64, the show was filmed in black and white. This was because of multiple reasons. However, the main one was cost. It was cheaper to film a show in black and white than in color. Other reasons included that the original pilot turned down by CBS was shot in color. Except execs were concerned kids would find the shows too scary if the spooky characters were in color. The Adams Family Coincidence The Monsters and the Adams Family have all also been compared since the shows first hit the air. Both shows follow the misadventures of loving and spooky families who live outside conventional norms. As a coincidence, uh, they both premiered on their respective networks on the same day. While this does appear as if CBS was complete, competing with ABC, the networks were unaware that they were both producing spooky-themed family sitcoms. Gwen and Lewis were concerned about working with Yvonne DiCarlo. It's difficult to imagine anyone else in the role of Lily Monster other than Yvonne DiCarlo. Chemistry between her and Fred Gwen and Al Lewis is part of what made the monsters fun to watch, so it may surprise you that Gwen and Lewis were apprehensive about DiCarlo joining the cast. It had nothing to do with the bad blood, rather than they were concerned that her background in dramatic roles, such as 1956 The Ten Commandments, uh, for example, was going to clash with her com comedic styles. However, she soon proved herself to be a versatile actress, and her chemistry with the rest of the cast was undeniable. Building the Dragula was sneaky business. One of the iconic elements of the show was the Dragula. Even though it only appeared in one episode, it immediately a fan favorite and was inspired various recreations through the years. Hard rock musician Rob Zombie even titled one of his songs after Grandpa's spooky car. The Dragula was built with a real coffin, but some legal issues forced the show's team to get creative. In North Hollywood, it was illegal to purchase a coffin without a death certificate, so... Project engineer George Barris made a deal with the funeral director to purchase a casket with cash, which Barris would pick up after dark by the funeral home's back door. The Monsters in the Comic Books Popularity of the Monsters opened up the market for merchandising featuring everyone's favorite friendly monsters. 
Tracking into the comic book industry wasn't going to be that easy due to the rules set by the Comic Code Authority that prohibited all depictions of vampires from comic books. However, Gold Key Comics was an independent company that worked outside the Comic Code Authority and printed 16 issues of the Monsters comic books. Last but not least, the cowardly lion was the first choice to play Grandpa. Before Al Lewis was offered to play the vampire uh, Grandpa on the Monsters, the role was first offered to Burt Lahr, famous for his performance in The Wizard of Oz as the Cowardly Lion. There is not much information on why he turned down the role. Fred Gwynn and Butch Patrick were, weren't the creator's first picks either. The role of Herman Munster was initially offered to John Carradine, known for his work on westerns, and child actor Billy Mummy was in mind to play Eddie Monster. And that's all I got for you. Someone wanted some stuff on the monsters? Well, there you go. Ask and you shall receive. Appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to subscribe, please. And don't forget to share these out with your family and friends. Uh, God bless. I'll be praying for you.